There's a movement uh, among Christians today toward what's been called Christian universalism. It, it's a belief that everybody ultimately will be saved, that there will be no hell or that at some point hell will be depopulated and everyone will live uh, forever with Christ in heaven. It's this wonderful thought. Does the Bible really teach it? Well, a lot of people immediately, intuitively, realize, no, of course that's not taught in Scripture. Look at all the passages about hell. Look at where Jesus talks about hell. But at the same time, there are passages, which I believe are normally taken out of context, that, quote, Christian universalists, end quote, uh, cite to prove their viewpoint. One of those passages is 2 Corinthians 5, uh, verse 19, where it says, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. And they point out, look, it says, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. I mean, not just Christians, but the whole world. So it means that the world is reconciled. I heard a Christian universalist say uh, the other day in an interview uh, that there are, according to this passage, there are those who know they have been reconciled to God in Christ, and there are those who do not yet know they have been reconciled, but all of us have been reconciled. Well, that sounds pretty persuasive to a lot of people. It certainly sounds attractive to a lot of people, but there are some major problems with it. One of those problems is uh, the, the whole issue of context because it ignores something critical. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, now I'm continuing to read, not counting men's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Who's the us? Believers. So we're going out to tell people about the importance of reconciliation. So you go, oh, well, that could still be just telling people they're already reconciled. There's nothing they have to do. They're already going to go uh, to heaven. Oh, well, that obviously uh, lacks the urgency of the gospel message. And then it says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So what's he doing? He's saying, you need to be reconciled, so get reconciled. So whatever it means that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, it does not mean that everybody is already reconciled. Maybe it means that God did a work of reconciliation that is available to all people, and he's already accomplished that. But to say that this is teaching Christian universalism uh, negates the whole greater context. There's numbers of places uh, that refer to believers and unbelievers. It goes on in chapter 6 to talk about not being yoked together uh, with uh, unbelievers. It's recognizing the distinction between them. In several places, it's recognizing an eternal distinction between them. So this is true of all the universalism passages. You know, if you take them as one verse by itself, it could sound like, yeah, all people will eventually be saved. But when you compare it to all those other passages, numbers of them spoken by Christ himself, then you realize it's a myth. And Jesus said, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a wide road, there's a wide way, and there are many that go through it, and it's a way that leads to destruction. And straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Now, the few there be doesn't, I think, in the end mean there'll hardly be anybody in heaven. I mean, there'll be people of every tribe and nation and language. But it is seeming to say that it's the minority of people uh, who ultimately will love and follow Jesus residing in heaven forever. So I think the message of, quote, Christian universalism is ultimately a false message.